Hello. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to have um, class again tomorrow. Uh, so I'm making this video for you so that you know the things that you need to know. <coughs> the first thing that I wanted to talk about was the... Um, and these lights are really brutal, aren't they? The first thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, the essay assignment. So although I have posted it on Friday and it's been available since then, I hope some of you have gone through and read it, uh, I would like to go through for a few minutes and talk about some of the features of that. Like the first essay assignment, I've provided you with a lot of information that uh, tells you what the essay should look at like, and none of those features have really changed. Um, again, I want a first draft, which should be two pages, should have a clear and concise, concise thesis. Um, there should be no quotations, only paraphrases and citations in the first draft. Also, on the bottom of the rough draft, again, I need you to list the focus that was on um, your Spinoza reflection. So again, I want you to pay attention to that and to be sort of trying to work on that. Um, the final draft of the essay is again four to five pages. Uh, you are only allowed to use four quotations in the draft. Uh, none of those quotations should exceed 20 words in length. Uh, both drafts must be double spaced 12 point Times New Roman font with one inch margins. Use MLA style guide, yada, yada, yada. All right, let's look at content guidelines. So again, you need to have a brief introduction and a brief conclusion in which you clearly articulate the thesis of your essay and show how you will argue for it. The thesis should be a single sentence response to your topic. Please uh, feel free to consult me at any time during the process. Uh, you, I am not on campus. Uh, I will not be on campus this week until Friday. Uh, although we will be having class on Wednesday and it will be in the classroom. Uh, but I am happy to look at drafts on Friday and you can also contact me by email. And I'm, I'm, I try to respond to those emails as quickly as I can. As you should know, the rough draft is due on April uh, 23rd, so it's on Monday by 11.59 p.m. This is a change from what is in the syllabus, so I've given you the weekend. Uh, the final draft deadline is corresponds to what is already in the syllabus. The most interesting part of this essay is the second page, and there I've given you a lot of information about how you should write this essay. Um, so let me talk a little bit about that. As you can see, if you're looking at it, I've already broken it down into three basic parts. Uh, so the first part of the essay needs to begin by explaining Rousseau's view of humans in civil society as slaves. So you may want to think about uh, that passage that we read in class. Uh, where he says that when I hear these things, I know that slaves should not um, uh, reason about liberty. This is on page 60 uh, at the bottom of, the, of that paragraph that begins on page 60. I'm not going to read through it again, but uh, you should already know what the, the purpose of that quote is. And you need to be explaining that in your essay. So he's trying to say that uh, in civil society, people function as slaves. Now, he doesn't mean that they are literally slaves. So you need to explain what he means when he's saying that they're slaves. The second part of the essay is where it becomes much more complicated, um, where you're going to have to do more thinking. Namely, what you need to do is explain how 
uh, what Rousseau would think of the actual historical institution of slavery. So given the account that he gives of the origin of inequality, where would slavery fit into that account? So in class, we've talked about how there are three basic moments. The first is the state of nature. The second is what he calls, or what I call rather, natural society. And the third is civil society. So which of those would permit slavery as it is known historically? So you need to talk about at least uh, somewhat each of these uh, different phases and say in what respects slavery would or would not um, belong to this particular moment. Um, the third part of the essay is where you are going to be talking about one historical example of slavery and that you'll be using in order to help inform your analysis of Rousseau. So the historical example you have of slavery will come from the Octoroon, which I'm going to be talking about in just a little bit. So you'll need to examine and explain the primary features of slavery as they appear in the Octoroon. So you'll want to pay pretty close attention to this lecture um, and you'll want to um, make sure you know where these portions of, the, of uh, the text are that sort of tell us what slavery is about. The last part of the essay, the conclusion, is the part where you need to make some sort of judgment, namely about whether or not Rousseau has done us a sort of disservice by talking about slavery in this kind of glib very, very general way. Um, has he failed to actually think about genuine slavery? Um, and moreover, does he have a responsibility to speak about slavery? So you need to answer at least some of those questions, if not all of them. Uh, the last thing that I write here is that uh, for the rough draft, you need to write a two-page version of the essay with the same ratio of portions, namely one to one, as well as an introduction and a conclusion. What that means is that if the first part of the essay is one page and the second part of the essay is two pages, then the third part of the essay should be one page. All right. I think that's pretty clear, but... Um, Obviously, if you have questions, I'd strongly encourage you to email me uh, about them.